Thank you, Dr. McHale. So I'm gonna be discussing restoring iron homeostasis in patients who've achieved transfusion independence after treatment with betibeglo gene auto tem cell gene therapy with up to seven years of follow-up. Um, beta thalassemia is a severe chronic inherited blood disorder um, that's due to one of many mutations in the beta globin gene that result in ineffective erythropoiesis. Um, in its simplest form um, and, and its most severe form, there is a complete absence of the ability to make beta globin, which translates into not making um, hemoglobin A, um, results in severe anemia and often transfusion dependence from infancy forward. Um, with chronic transfusions, ine inevitably patients will have iron overload, not only from the transfusions, but also from increased intestinal uptake of iron. This results in iron overload in the heart and liver, which can be fatal, but also in endocrine organs, which causes tremendous disability and, and, um, and uh, dysfunction. Betty Beglo gene uh, auto tem cell or Betty cell is an investigational ex vivo gene addition approach that addresses the underlying cause of, of TDT or transfusion dependent thalassemia. Patients on study are, have their stem cells mobilized with pleurixophore and collected by apheresis. They're then sent to a central laboratory where their cells are transduced with a lentiviral vector that encodes um, uh, beta A T eighty seven Q, which is a, a slightly modified but otherwise normally functional functional beta A, um, beta globin. Um, once that, that, that transduction takes place, their, their drug product is cryopreserved, sent back to the clinical site where the patient undergoes uh, myeloablation with busulfan and reinfusion. Once they recover from their autologous transplant, their, immune, their hematopoietic system should reconstitute and they should now be able to make normal adult hemoglobin, which includes the incorporation of AT87Q. What I'm reporting on is 57 patients across four clinical studies um, of Betty Cell that have now enrolled in the long-term follow-up. This includes all the patients that were in the original phase one, phase two trials, as well as most of the patients in the phase three trial. So 57 of the anticipated 63 patients in this gene therapy program have now rolled over to long-term follow-up with a median follow-up of the, this combined four groups of, of uh, 42, 41 and a half months. And these are the characteristics of the phase one, two group compared to the phase three. The phase three patients are slightly younger. Um, the early experience in the phase one, two trials allowed us to be more comfortable with enrolling more children. And that, that, that has actually uh, helped us to understand um, safety and efficacy in children in the phase three setting. You'll note that in both of these cases, these are heavily transfused individuals um, who have significant iron overload based on their liver iron concentration, as well as their serum ferritin. And question that's frequently asked is about the, the, um, the, the, the inclusion of fertility preservation in this, uh, this uh, program, and the answer is all patients are offered uh, fertility preservation. This slide looks at the phase three studies in Betty Cell, comparing the, looking at the children and adolescents at the top and the adults at the bottom. So the swimmers plot has in light blue the periods of time where they're still receiving transfusions following gene therapy, and then the darker blue the period uh, during which they are now trans, not, no longer receiving transfusions. The red bar represents the end of the parent trial and the transition to the long-term follow-up study. What's noteworthy is that nearly 89% of these individuals are now deemed transfusion independence based on protocol criteria um, for a, me a median duration of 32 months and a weighted average hemoglobin of 11.6. This, we actually then look at a subset of, of, of patients who actually had sufficient data to allow us to look pre-gene therapy um, after they stop chelation, post-gene therapy, and then their latest follow-up to examine iron homeostasis. And in, in most individuals, by and large, while they had some degree of iron overload prior to, prior to uh, their, their gene therapy, once they completed post-gene therapy chelation, we saw a reduction in liver, and iron, liver iron concentration and ferritin, and that once they stopped chelation, they were able to, by and large, maintain this. In terms of the safety profile, um, the, the table shows you the AEs that were uh, reported in, the, in, the, in patients who were now in long-term follow-up, so beyond the initial parent phase one, two, or three study. All patients are alive. There have been no reported cases of replication competent lentivirus, no clonal expansion, no insertional oncogenesis, no malignancies in, in thalassemia, and very reassuringly, there have been two male patients, one of whom underwent fertility preservation 
reservation who report um, having uh, healthy children with their partners. So our takeaways, I'm reporting on 57 patients, which is the largest to date gene therapy program in any, any uh, blood disorder um, that really included a very broad range of genotypes of thalassemia and across a broad age range. Uh, it would appear that this one-time Betty cell gene therapy is capable of achieving durable transfusion independence, that iron overload is improved and stable in these individuals, and that the, the adverse event profile uh, seems quite favorable. And so at this point, we believe that Betty's cell is potentially curative for patients with TDT. Thank you.